What's good, y'all? Yeah, it's your boy back home, you know what I'm saying? Spend Thanksgiving on my mom or whatever. But anyway, here for a little mixtape review. We got a little Chucky with Overdue. You know, he's no longer with YMCMB. Um, if you didn't know, go check out the um, interview he did on The Breakfast Club. Pretty interesting. But he dropped off a mixtape with 20 tracks. You know, it's kind of lengthy, but, you know, it was dope, nevertheless. Um... Bars features, you got T Pain, 3D Nate, Kid Kid, Ty Dolla Sign, Chuck Marley, um, Seven Money Hungry Miz, or something like that. But basically, it's 20 tracks, but I only count 15 because basically five of them is like um, skits. So at the end of the day, you know, it's like 15. Of course, you know, got like little shots of Young Money. Uh, Little Wayne, of course, if you listen to track number nine. But anyway, the intro, definitely a hard song, man. That beat was crazy. Uh, his flow was on point. He was honest as hell. He spoke about a lot of different things in that song. Uh, it was like storytelling, you know, and it showed that he's more than just a commercial rapper. This nigga actually can rap. And if you didn't know, he's from New Orleans, though, just like Little Wayne is. And some say that he sounds like him or, or looks like him or whatever, but he talks about that also on the mixtape and in the interview uh i fuck with that record number two can't deny another dope beat he spazzed on that flow man he actually spoke about some real things yet again the storytelling record and it, it was a cool hook you know what i'm saying um at the end of the day he showed improved on that record uh losses is number three the beat was kind of zany in a way you know it kind of got a passionate hook or whatever um his flow was smooth um, he was open and honest with his lyrics. You dig what I'm saying? So you definitely got to take credit and give credit where credit is due. That was a dope record. Do Me featuring T-Pain. It could easily be a radio single, in my opinion. I'm going to leave it at that. It was, it was dope. Uh, number five in the mix, Bros Over Hoes. Definitely a club banger. You know, I could see that playing in a club. And a lot of niggas, you know, feel like it should be Bros Over Hoes. But definitely, that's a good record. Fucking with it. Uh, number six, get three checks, because it's like dope record. Make a plan featuring 3D Nate, mellow beat, a catchy ass hook. You know, you got some great lyrics, you know, a couple good bars in there, a couple good lines. I like his flow, and the feature fit the record very well. Number seven, I skipped it. It's a skit. I ain't like it. Uh, number eight, all that I know, uh, a very interesting beat, you know, very intriguing. His lyrics was honest. His flow was just raw as hell. Like, he was getting some shit off his chest. Um, he takes shots at YMCMB. The hook was good as hell, man. But definitely, that's a good record. Um, number nine, Flatline. Featuring Kid Kid. Like I said, listen to the line about the skateboard. Definitely a Lil Wayne shot. Kid Kid did his thing as well. You know, two artists that was formerly of YMCMB. And they both did their thing on that record. Both their verses was good. Um... The lyrics was very violent in that song, you know, the flows was raw, so they definitely have something in common when it comes to that record, so I fuck with it. Number six, Grandfather Speaks is a skit, so I skipped it. Number eleven, Wake Up featuring Ty Dolla Sign, yet again another song that should be played on the radio, uh, melodic beat, uh, the smooth hook, I, he's comfortable with his lyrics, he's comfortable with his flow, definitely confident, and that shows in that record right there. Number twelve, Lil Brother. Um, very aggressive, you know, he gave some very sharp details in that record, you know, where it's like, damn, who is he referring to? So I think with this mixtape, he got a lot of shit off his chest, you know, the beat was dark as hell, he spazzing them lyrics, his flow was crazy, good hook, you know, he definitely had a lot of shit to say in this song, so I definitely fuck with it, uh, cause y'all remember when Lil Wayne was, you know, signed him, you know, he always referred to him as my little brother. You dig what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, it was a good record. Number 13, In the Clouds, featuring Chuck Marley. Another skit, pass it. Uh, number 14, Timing. Uh, another song where he was honest as hell. I like the catchy hook, the melodic flow. The beat was dope as hell. You know, everything is about timing. And at the end of the day, all you got is time. You know, so take advantage of it and don't waste it. Uh, number 15, Poison. They flipped the sample, you know, if y'all remember the song Poison, but I think Bell Biv DeVoe, so definitely that song was crazy. Um, it took me a little time to listen to it, like, twice, you know. It's kind of a female-orientated record for the ladies, but he did his thing on it, you know. The flow was ill. 
you know, at first listen, when you first hear you like, what the fuck is this? And then it's like, oh, okay, it kicks in and then you definitely rock with it. Number 16, um, I think it's okay. I just think the song got to grow on me. Uh, number 17, Call You Back, Ma. Uh, definitely another skit. I skipped it. Uh, number 18, Get Up, Melodic Piano Type Beat. Um, the hook was honest as hell. And most hooks either catchy or got a good melody, but it was honest. You know, he was super deep in this record for what he was saying. He definitely wrote some real lyrics there, and you got to give him credit where credit is due, and his flow was good. Number 19, What You Know About It. Dope beat, his flow was steady. Uh, the hook was cool as hell. Some street lyrics in there on some hood shit. And he definitely fuck with it. In the last track, the outro, you know, he just basically talking and saying what's up and shout out to everybody. But I definitely feel a little Chucky grew. You know, he's 19 years old. You know, I think Wayne signed him when he was 13. And the interesting thing, like he said, Wayne found me. I didn't go find Wayne. I mean, you know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, he he on his own thing, man. Like pause, but he he about his business. Um, I think he got his own movement called uh, Libra Gang, and I get his project an eight and a half out of ten. I like fifteen out of twenty records. Production about nine out of ten. Uh, his last mixtape was LeBron on LeBron on my time. Uh, dropped last year October thirtieth, and before that he dropped the Cipher mixtape October 9th, two thousand twelve. So he definitely doing what he doing. You know, I just hope he can keep the momentum going and. Um, Definitely check out that Breakfast Club interview because they definitely talked about a lot of shit in there. You know what I'm saying? Um, and I think he got a lot of shit off his chest. So at the end, wait, was it the Breakfast Club or was it Sway in the Morning? I think it was Sway in the Morning. So check Sway. My bad, it wasn't Breakfast Club. It was Sway in the Morning. But definitely check that interview out and check this project out. I fuck with it. I co sign it. You know what I'm saying? You can't really overlook him and he talks about a, a lot of shit to where it's like before you know how you hear the content now and you're like damn he cussing and talking about this and that but it's back then when Wayne had him it was kind of that teenage type vibe shit and he couldn't say certain things so now that he's older he could talk about a lot more interesting shit you know and get off what he really wanted to get off pause but I definitely fuck with it y'all should check it out um so yeah Lil Chucky Overdue it's dope one